the next edition of Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy. We are here with Conservative Pip from DeviantArt, and he is going to be talking to us about freemium games, which I've never heard of this freemium games thingy until I ran into him. So um, would you please uh, let us know um, what are these freemium games? I've never heard of it, so please fill us in. I honestly see freemium games as a scourge that needs to be dealt with somehow. somehow. An entire episode of South Park was dedicated to the subject. Some of the more modern Call of Duty games have over $100 worth of possible DLC. Candy Crush makes over $500,000 a day. Games openly sell shortcuts that allow you to get a powerful class or item much more quickly than through normal gameplay. And The Sims 4 has even openly removed the creature from The Sims 3 and sells it back as DLC in the current game. Okay, I so... I, I, I can say from personal experience, um, you know, generally, like, with games like War Thunder, um, they can serve to be a disadvantage because if you're working on your premium setup and you're trying to build your tiers and things of that nature out of War Thunder, and War Thunder is basically a game where you fly uh, aircraft and you can do a few ground units in War Thunder. They have tanks and stuff available, but um, they do have downloadable content available that you can pay money to get, but the problem is you're kind of shafting yourself because you buy this really high-tier aircraft and then you've got nothing else to back it up with, and once you get blown out of the sky in your high-tier airplane, you got to go back to some, like, Tier 1 or Tier 2 aircraft, and the way the game is set is it will match you in a tier system based on the type of aircraft that you do have. And if you have an airplane that's like, you know, say a tier five, you know, or a tier seven or something, or way up there, way the hell up there, you know, um, you'll get placed in a tier seven match. And then once you get blown out of that airplane, you get put back into a tier one aircraft in a tier seven match. Ooh. So you're kind of shafting yourself and, I've seen it happen many times, you know, some guys flying a little pea shooter, you know, 30s fighter against a bunch of, you know, early 50s jet aircraft. You can see how well that's going to go. <laughs> aircraft that are capable of 500 miles an hour is according to some little aircraft that can barely do over 100, you know. So you're pretty much just cannon fodder. As to where if you build up your tier system, you're actually earning things one at a time and you know you're not you're not screwing yourself because okay you know let me let me see if i understand this properly so the idea of freemium games is when it's technically a free game but then you can buy all this extra shit which then ends up being a complete waste of fucking time because in the long run, the extra shit really doesn't get you anywhere, and the whole freemium concept is just a mechanism designed to basically take your money and fuck you over. I think maybe, because, well, I'm going to... S I'm one thing... Well... Premium yeah, is sort of a scourge that I think that needs to be dealt with. There are some some games have openly removed features from the from a previous title and releases on DLC on a future title or on the current title. So basically, they take a pre-existing feature and they remove it and then they they sell it as an add-on in a future game. So you're literally buying what once was free. And then on top of it, to compound the problem is what Richard just went into. So the whole freemium concept is, is nothing but a concept to screw you over and take your money. That's pretty much the pretty idea. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, Let it's, me it's, pull up a... There was a Cracked.com article I found a while back about freemium. All right. Well, when you pull up the Cracked.com article... Um, why don't you paste it into the chat box here, and then Richard can pull that up and do a screen share so that everyone else can see the article, too. Hmm. 
Something is wrong here. Why? What's up? Are you still there? This this is getting awkward. There you are. Oh, okay. Yep, you're back. It's cool. So yeah, just um, look up that uh, look up that cracked article and paste the link into the chat box in this hangout, and then Richard will pull that up and enable his screen share so that everybody else can see it while we're talking about it. That's one of the convenient uh, features of Google Hangout. We have that sort of capability with that. And also, if you can look up the name of the South Park episode that uh, that made fun of this, um, just in case anybody might want to go back and watch that episode through Netflix or whatever South Park Premium happens. Premium isn't to be. free is the name of the episode. Okay, freemium isn't free. So yeah, whether whether uh, we can find that on YouTube or net Netflix or wherever that can be found. Um, I, I remember. I think I remember briefly seeing the episode. But all mm -hmm. I remember is that it's so evil that li it like literally was made by the Canadian version of Satan, and the South Park's regular Satan had to possess a regular character to defeat the Canadian one. <laughs> okay, and so the title is "Freemium Isn't Free," so anybody else watching this can kind of like jot that down, and later, you know, whether you can watch it through YouTube or Netflix or wherever it is, people can can view this episode. Um, people can then track it down based on the title and watch this. Um, I'm definitely going to go ahead and uh, and do that later. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious. I've never seen that if South Park episode. Generally, here in the United States, if you want to see South Park, Hulu is the place to do it. Hmm. Yes. Although I, I'd I'd imagine it's probably on Netflix too, isn't it? I mean, I uh, I have I have Netflix, no. although I I've never personally checked to see whether or not South Park was actually there, but. I haven't seen South Park on Netflix. I've only seen like Family Guy, American Dad, um, The Cleveland Show. I've only seen Seth MacFarlane stuff. I've never seen any South Park or The Simpsons. So. I'm just going to double check and see if maybe somebody uploaded that to YouTube. Uh, I just started typing the word freemium and the first result is freemium isn't free. I did that in the YouTube interface there and Let's see. Hold on, I can't remember the article. I'm going to look under video games. Okay, well, um, YouTube has it quote unquote rentable for a uh, freemium isn't free, $1.99. And there are also little clips and stuff that um, people have uploaded from that, South Park clips. And then there's also a review. Freemium isn't free. Um, yeah, there's there's these little reviews and stuff like South Park After Show Season 18 Episode 6 Premium Isn't Free After Buzz TV. That's a 20. Oh yes, I found the article. I found the article right here. Okay. Yeah, so just toss that link into the chat box so that Richard can then pull that up into the screen share. That would be good. Or I could do it, whatever. It doesn't matter who does it. One of us will do it. But Richard will probably have more to say about it, so. Man, I love Open Office. This thing is just awesome. Yeah, I thought you might. Go. LibreOffice is pretty pretty cool Go too. And type this in. Okay. Um. You you can't um just give us the link to the article that you looked up. You can't you can't copy and paste that in. I'd rather not. I, ha I don't. I don't. T I tend not to swear. 
I'm not sure what that has to do with copying and pasting an article link, but okay. It's just going up to the address bar at the top, just copying it in. and. Yeah, I have no idea what that has to do with profanity, copying and pasting go. a link. By... There we go. Yeah, you got it. Cool. Copy. Yeah, he, he pasted it, so you can you can go ahead and click into that. It's yeah, in the I chat see it. That's what I'm yep. doing right now. Yep. Okay. Now, okay. now one that blatant, sure. now one of the most blatant examples of freemium, perhaps the most blatant example, is the destiny in this article. Destiny. Can you guys see my screen? A video game. Yep, I can. Uh, did you click this the button? The first that, hold, hold on, hold on, guy. Did, did you um the the button that says present to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Which do you guys see the proper screen here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Correct. at least at least they've at least they've covered up the the nipples there, so it is um, you know, um, YouTube compliance as far as their policies. But yeah, let's definitely focus on what the article is saying rather than. Uh, But five video game DLC so bad they should be considered scams. Paying for temporary uh, titillation. Titillation. For titillation. Let, let's just let's just skip ahead to the first one on the second page. The taken game features. This is to quote this first article. First one on the second page. Hold on, let Richard get there. He's uh, he's no, calling. No, it says number one, hashtag one thing. Yeah. Well, the, Sims um, Four previously removed removed things previous games already had, but not only Destiny takes your games and removes things you are already playing. This is the first expansion to expand backwards into the past and destroy things you already had if you don't buy it. A video game that removes things from your history. That's not a DLC. That's a Doctor Who villain. I'm going to say this only once. I'm going to say this. They are dip now. They're dipping our toes in an entire ocean of urine, and that urine is lapping against a shore of shattered game discs, looking against a collapsed statue of Super Mario as we fall into the stinking surf and scream that they're finally really done it. Oh, um, can, is this is this group chat thing visible on the live? Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're live streaming. We're recording. We're and yeah. It, it's all. Or, or, it, or, oh, it, oh, 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 wait a minute. The chat box? No, not the chat box. But but anything that anything that he's got screen shared is visible. So is there is there something else Richard needs to put on the screen? Because like if you put links in the chat box, you know Richard can click them and and load them up on the screen share if that's what you're asking. Because that's not a problem, and that's what we just did with the cracked article. You put it in the chat box on the side, and he clicked it and you know loaded it straight up in the in the screen share. So is there anything else that you need us to load up on the screen share? All right, but try to try to censor the chat lock block. Try for no reason for some reason. I'm going to, I don't know. Yeah. The the text chat is not viewable to people watching the video. That's why I'm saying any links that you put in the in the text chat, we Richard would have to click it and then load it into a new tab. Thank you. So it's not visible. Yeah. So that's that's what I just said like three times. So yeah, I was explaining if you want something visible. Paste the link in the in the side, and Richard will click it and open up a new a new tab, and then it'll be visible on his screen. So yeah. we all on the same page. We all on the same page with that now. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah, this this definitely seems like a problem. This this freemium piece of shit here. It just it totally seems like a complete scamola. Yes, freemium is something that's pretty bad, and this is why we. And this is why we openly have video game modding, mind you. Civilization V alone has like over a thousand mods. And as NC17 son, I have reviewed multiple mods of Civilization V, 
and I'm working on a second Let's Play series of a mod called Superpower. It is a total conversion thingy that adds many new units, policies, buildings, wonders. And as well as new game concepts. Well, I play one of the classic predecessors to Sid Meier's Civilization. I never really got into the Sid Meier series, but uh, I do play the old classic original Rise of Nations. That's a classic. And that one is... They do have it on Steam now, which I'm kind of glad that they moved it over to Steam. You know, because the multiplayer is kind of interesting. Sometimes it's fun to play multiplayer, but um, I've still got the original... Microsoft inbox game, you know. And not only that, the mods are all free, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Most of the mods I deal with, though, aren't really like the scam mods that kind of can be a double-edged sword and bite you in the ass. I mean, there are certainly those mods that I've seen and been around. They do exist, and one of the biggest ones is like Facebook. Facebook is really annoying. Like sometimes, you know, if you want to play the game, it'll say, you know, uh, pay twenty nine ninety nine to do this, or you know, thirty yeah, bucks to yuck. do that, or fifty dollars to do that. It's like I, 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 I hate, I hate Facebook why games. I hardly ever play, that's why I hardly ever play games on Facebook because it goes from being about the game to be. Well, I, I will say I've found an exception to the rule, and that's. Uh, Star Trek, uh... Well, there are... Well, there are many games nowadays that instead of, like, you buy the game or you get the game for free and you buy random stuff in it, like, exchange real game currency for digital currency to beat... to buy fictional items, to beat a player who also bought fictional items with real-world money. Mm-hmm. Now, when when they reduce when they do that, you know, screwing over process there. Oh, hold on a minute, I've got a call coming in. Hey, Dad, we're in a live broadcast right now. Um, is it important? What's up? I don't know, maybe another hour, or something like that. Um, this guy's probably going to be head heading to bed. No, oh, I mean I could do that when I'm done, and I'm not going to be like on forever or anything. Um, well, I could. I, well, Richard's on with me here too, so I guess I could just take a break right quick and just have Richard conduct us. Yep. All right, I'll be down. Yeah, I am needed briefly, so like I will be right back in a few minutes. So Richard, you're gonna have to take this over for the moment, but you guys are doing most of the talking anyway, so that's all good. But just let you know, I will be right back. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, I would like, the, the thing about premium is that while many people are getting into out-waste contests on popular Facebook games, there are some, ups, there are some lesser known games that are, that are into it and, that, and might have more rewarding experiences that cost less money. The problem is that they're a little more obscure than say Candy Crush or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can I can name a few games for you that I found that I can name a few games for you that I found that might be worth more of your time. Well let me pull up something. Plays, my video reviews. Games I'd like to get is an article, small thing I wrote here. There is a game. There is a there is a game on Steam called Age of Decadence, which is a really gritty, which is like a which is like a sad, like a sad like Fall of Rome style world. Like basically, imagine medieval times plus Fallout as Age of Decadence. Mm-hmm. There is a. 
It's an unusual, in a fantasy sense, instead of being a swashbuckling hero who can easily slay dozens, who can easily slay dozens of men throughout his or her journey, you aren't meant to be a swashbuckling hero in this game. There are enough possible deaths you can die in the game to easily make a dumb ways to die video. People will hesitate to lie and steal from you. In your starting location, a man will claim to have fine weapons, but with a dispute with the commercial faction. He will lead you to a house where two men ambush and try to kill you. And in the game, you can eat them before your own cons. Interesting. And for some reason, removing your female character's armor reveals her breasts. <laughs> the game yeah. is also too vast and will make use of way too many skills, even early on for a completest run. To experience the games, it requires multiple runs with multiple characters. Even conning a merchant outside the inn has makes uses of three skills, persuasion, streetwise, and impersonate. Skills that would be combined into one skill in a normal RPG. <laughs> There's also a bit of comedy elements in there, but this game, I, I tried the demo on Steam and it's interesting. There is also another, there are also other games that I, let's go on to the variant, to ver, to modding in general. Mods, I think, are should be a protected form of free expression. What do you think? Well, well, the way I think of mods, I mean, personally, like, when it comes to freemiumware, I think, personally... I mean, it's almost, to me, like, buyer beware type of thing. I mean, yeah, there's going to be, unfortunately, the gullible ones who are going to go for it and, you know, end up doing something really stupid and making it not fun for themselves. But um, when it comes to freemium where I think really the best safeguard would be to prevent, you know, the stupid type of stuff that you can sometimes see with freemium. It's like when you get to a certain level in the game when you've actually shown vested interest in the game and you've actually been working at it the normal way for a while, then it could unlock those things like like expansions, you know, like, you know, they could be unlocked with with levels, you know, like once you've leveled up, you know, you've gained perks, you've gained, you know, access to certain things. But it's not. But you're not. You won't have the ability to unlock all of the the downloadable content until you've literally played the damn thing to its conclusion. Here's a miscellaneous statement. What if there was like a very cute winemaker's daughter, but there was just one small problem? You there? Yeah, I'm here. The girl's feet smell like Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a miscellaneous diversion, but seriously, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure when it comes to gaming, modding. I'm pretty sure modifying your game, like making various, like adding various stuff to your game, or like say the mod Rise of the Reds, which is a C C Command and Conquer Generals mod. I'm pretty sure modding should be a Protected form of free speech. Whether it's a whether it's a country guy installing a key engine into his truck, but ar ar putting tr armor on his key engine to truck, putting a laser pointer thingy on his favorite shotgun, to a man to a man installing say community called the Power, which is a really really massive Civilization Five mod into his game, and there is an entire Steam and there's and modding is so popular that Steam literally put a feature called the Steam Workshop where you can literally get mods off of Steam and put it into your game. And boy, are some of them pretty vast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, flight simulator mods are crazy. Like, uh, there's all kinds of scenery modifications for airports. There's... Uh... One of the most... There's like a... Speaking of deep premium and DLC... One of the most premium, perhaps the most DLC in a Steam game is Train Simulator, where like many, many, many different trains. Perhaps if there, if, if there was like an alternate reality where the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and copyright didn't exist, I would be, I would, 
I wouldn't be surprised in this dimension if that if that train simulator game had everything from the train, the, the, the My Little Pony French was Magic cutesy train that's seen in the intro, to various Thomas the Train Engine trains, to trains themed after Star Wars characters. Maybe. What do you think? Well, yet again, I've seen mods on Flight Simulator where, you know, people have took and, like, made aircraft libraries out of Star Wars. They've made uh, My Little Pony libraries for F-18s. I mean, that stuff already exists, you know. It just comes down to the guy who can make the coding for the skin and things of that nature. And it's really just a form of, yeah, it's just showing off something. It's just taking something else of creativity and putting it into a game that you enjoy playing. Yeah, there's no... It's not, yeah, I, you're not, you're not stealing anything. You're just converting a popular culture image and putting it on an airplane, you know, hell in the, in the wake of the Paris tragedy. Um, cause I like a few flight simulator, um, groups on Facebook. Um, there were guys taking freeware, like, uh, Boeing 727s, which are basically, uh, uh, three engine aircraft and they're basically putting hashtag pray for Paris and putting the colors of the French flag on the airplane as a library, you know, just as a commemoration for what happened in Paris, you know. And that I mean, is why and that is why modding is a good version good should be a protected form of free speech. I'd say it already is. I'd really say it already is because I know, know I know it, but it, it, it's it's I'm, it's not I don't think it is protected because, well, we got TPP. The, TPP. Yes, I, already, I was going to say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure oh, there's yeah, enough there's... constitution violating stuff in there that if someone were affected by TPP, <laughs> like having their computer seized or having their free ed, free speech like violated, they could probably go to the Supreme Court and they would render a a ve and they would probably render a Supreme Court decision that would render TPP void. And the judges who do this decision might score some very serious political points. Like, you might, like they could run for president and easily score a million or more votes in their favor. Only problem is, is because it's all corporate controlled. Well, the last president to run up against the corporations was JFK, and we all know what happened to him. Mm-hmm. The main thing... plus, plus, I got two words for you: electoral college. Um, I never, uh, when I was taking constitution class, um, and you know, when I was a teenager, it's like I was like, wait a minute, the con the uh, the electoral college can take whatever the people vote and override it, and these guys can just make the vote whatever they want. How is it that we actually have fair election then? Doesn't seem like we do. The electoral college is a piece of crap. It's corporate controlled. It's Wall Street controlled, and it just takes the people's votes and goes, no, we don't like what they voted, we'll just do what we want. It's an inherent rigging that's been in the system forever, but most people, are, it just kind of, they're oblivious to it, and they don't realize the implications. Well, I was just about to say, um, one of the biggest uh, things about the TPP, T PP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's really kind of a shot in the foot, and the reason why free speech for mods and things of that nature are protected, really more than people want it, the you know the powers that be want us to believe, is because if somebody gets taken down, it gets reported immediately. There, there is not. I mean, just just look at the dark web, for instance. I mean, everything that anonymous does, for Christ's sake, is like it's instantaneously uploaded. So. I mean, if some guy got taken down, a little small guy got taken down because, you know, he put a mod on something, that would make the news so quick it wouldn't even be funny. And there'd be so much public outrage and attention that, you know, anything that any of these companies or corporations or whoever could do, it would just severely backfire and, you know. Thank they, God they for would, free speech. They would, lose, they, would, they would lose more in the long run than they'd be gaining out of it. That's why they don't do anything. The main thing with the Trans-Pacific Partnership is is mostly fear porn. It's designed to keep people in check and make people think, yeah. oh, yeah. well, you know, because this exists, that means can you I shouldn't, can I shouldn't someone... be creative. The, 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 TPP, the TPP can can only work if the people decide to be complacent to it, but if the people look at it and go, fuck you, we're not doing that, then it's it's a fail. I can somehow imagine a man who's taken his case to Supreme Court about that thing. 
Mm-hmm. Also, most people don't understand what copyright was originally designed to do. Um, back in the day, there just used to be a problem of someone saying, okay, I made this song. Then someone else would say, no, you didn't. I did. Then the third person would go, no, you didn't. I did. So all copyright was originally there to do is to be able to determine who actually made a piece of material. And in the event that somebody else used your copyrighted material, it wasn't like, oh, you, you're forbidden to use it. It's like, okay, if you make money from that, then the original copyright holder is authorized to a cut of that money. That's all it was ever there to do. It was not. It's not there to control derivative works and to Naziistically try to repress freedom of speech and expression and creativity. That's what copyright has turned into. But even on the books as it stands, it's written that that's not what it's for. Well, I wonder if someone would have used TPP to go after marijuana legalization speech. Then again, even they would not be dumb enough to do that due to the sheer crap storm it would unleash, like DDoS attacks by the masses, Sony-styled hacks that would cause millions of dollars of damages. Basically, the marijuana legalization people do not want to be trampled with as they've already been enough, and they're pretty much rock hard as heck. Well, I'd say in the news recently, I mean, you know, I think the reason why the news doesn't really bash Anonymous and you don't really hear much about the news talking about Anonymous, they just kind of ignore them like a gray area is because Anonymous time so and again has Anonymous time and again has proven that they can they can do what they say that they can do. I mean recently what they did with ISIS, they took over, you know, twenty five thousand Twitter accounts and shut them down. And not only that, blew the floodgate open of like, okay, why does ISIS have 25,000 Twitter accounts and who gave ISIS 25,000 Twitter accounts? Those are the questions that are being asked now. Yeah, not it's the mainstream it's, it's, level and the alternative level. It's like, gee, why is Zuckerberg banning TSU simply for the crime of being equitable, yet Zuckerberg does not ban Twitter? And Twitter has had what? Like you just said, over 25,000 ISIS Conserv accounts. Conservative, conservative Pip, do you know what TSU is? I heard of it. TSU or Sue, yeah. Here, let me, let me pull it up so that way. So it's like, it's, like, it's like Zuckerberg is saying, we love ISIS, but TSU bad. You know what I mean? I see the hypocrisy in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have it's ISIS. like, oh, we're we we're have, not uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna ban ISIS, but we're gonna ban a competing rival social media network that shares ad revenue with its users. Mm -hmm. Can we talk can about? You, can you guys can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, here is TSU. Um, TSU is like Facebook, only. What TSU does is it gives 90% of the ad revenue that it generates to its users instead of taking all of that revenue and pocketing it for their own corporate interests like Facebook. Like Zuckerberg does. This website is so controversial right now that Zuckerberg had it banned simply because, just simply because it's, you know, it's a direct threat. Just that model is a direct threat. Right now in my account alone, I have a dollar fifty-three. You know, I, I have twenty-one dollars and, and some Dave, odd cents. And, and Dave has twenty-one bucks and some odd cents. One of my other friends, Trent, I don't even know what he's up to by now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like forty yeah. or fifty dollars. Kevin now. Kevin Hinkle makes about two or three hundred dollars a month. Uh -huh. And I mean, these are the results just of a very new service that's just you know not even very old at all. A little over a year. So if it's already doing that, if people are already making tens of dollars and hundreds of dollars, then it's like, what's the long run going to be? I mean, if you've got like a major, like super celebrity, oh, that's weird, Rich just dropped, he'll be back. 
um, if you've got a if you've got a major superstar celebrity who's got you know, millions millions and millions of followers, I mean, if people are making two and three hundred dollars a month with like 20, 20 30 thousand followers, what can a superstar celebrity make with millions and millions of followers? So the potential is really sick here. And it's just like Zuckerberg's all pissed off because it's like, oh, my God, if they succeed with that and all the, the other social media networks then do that as well, then, oh, my God, I'm going to have to change my business model in order to survive. And Zuckerberg don't want to change. I agree. He, I guess. He, likes to, he likes to control. He doesn't like to change to everyone else. He likes to change everyone else to his nasty will, you know. So he does not like where this is going. And this whole big cock block that he's done has only served to give TSU more and more advertisement. I mean, it's already reached RT News. Yeah, I mean, it's hit RT News. I Wait a minute. Doesn't... Wait. Why do I have so many DVR views already? Like, I'm over 100 like, now, but it's like... Every... Is being live really doing? This is awesome. I don't. I, let's. If what before I hear about are, premium, you, let's. Um, what, what views are you looking at? My views on my Deviant are like nine thousand four hundred and one. Let me refresh. Yeah. Nine thousand four hundred and three. This is. I don't know why, but. That's not but I think anything. what you're looking at is the D your page views over time, like on my on my deal here, like you can see. Yeah, I've already done that. But can we yeah. talk about premium since yeah. this is our main subject here? Yeah, well, this well, you know, this this has directly to do with it too, because like you know, imagine like you know how people do like online game reviews and things like that on, on YouTube and and you know gameplay and all that. And, Already you know, been they, doing they, that. Yeah, they take and demonstrate their mods on YouTube. Well, not only does YouTube have, you know, the YouTube Partners Program where you can get get paid by them for doing all of that. I'm in the Partners Program, and, you know, so is Rich. But imagine the game modding, you know, genre moving over to something like TSU to where they're sharing their game mods and stuff on TSU and 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 getting paid simply because they're doing it. How, how, how much more better could the mods be if the modders were getting paid? Think about that. I know. That would be awesome. And I, w and I don't know about that TPP thing. I'm pretty sure considering how Fear Anonymous is, they could probably do some serious damage to their lobbyists. Like the MPAA.org website would be, would be targeted by Anonymous and wrecked so thoroughly that it would take weeks to get it back online. And the format that might be different since it was wrecked so thoroughly. Anonymous is... Oh, oh, yeah. I can imagine that if they pass TPP, there's a, there's a lot of websites that will be going down. Not to mention what, what most people don't know as well is that, um, you know, when people think of, like, viruses and all that stuff, they think, oh, well, software can only hurt software. Wrong. You can make a computer virus that will destroy hardware because it can reconfigure it to overclock so much that you burn out hard drives, you burn out processors, so on and so forth. So if Anonymous wanted to be real dicks, they could, actu they could actually physically destroy these corporations' computer server hardware through their hacking. Most people don't realize that, yes, that is possible. Yes, and I can only imagine the chatter that would go on by, already we're people already weary of Obama and that there is and that some people have already spoken about seceding from the union Texas even put that in their constitution hundreds of years ago it's funny you know what most people don't know about that yeah um, for the longest time there hasn't been a union the union got hijacked when they created the United States of America incorporated which is completely separate from the original union that our founding fathers set up what, so what most people don't realize is we don't need to succeed from the union. There's no union to succeed, to succeed from. The states simply need to divorce themselves from the corporation legally and then reform back into the original union as it was supposed to be. Then a lot of the, a lot of the control systems will be undone. 
Why? All they have to do is divorce Wall Street, basically, and reform back up into the actual original union instead well, of the United uh, States of America. In my, uh, and, well, in my fiction, well, my com in my comedy idea, the world mud, which the fictional facts which inspired the world mud in NC-17 saw, it's pretty dystopian. Even before the even before the rise of even before the corporations and everything, there is clearly mm -hmm. elemental magics, elements of magic in it. Like the the plague is an ex, is a is a is an alchemy is a dump filled with alchemical used up alchemical regions and spellcasting regions. But my focus here is on NC seventeen sand. It would require a whole other video to go through the world mud, and let's only do well, one topic for now. Well, neuro-linguistic neuro programming is also known as word magic. That's why you have spelling class. I guess. The uh, words are what they are, very much on purpose. If only people would study the history of words, they'd understand the language they're speaking a bit better. <laughs> But let's just go through some some of my favorite good some good mods I found online since that's what we're here for. Yeah. Well, feel free to toss up those links, and I'm sure um, Richard will display them. Mm-hmm. So if you've got any links to show off those mods, feel free. I also do some. I've also reviewed some YouTube videos and some free internet games like Flash games that are also worthy of. The reason I wanted to review some YouTube videos is to help spread fame over them. And if something is famous enough, you'll, it'll be undesirable to take it down because you'll release a crap store on, on yourself like a brass knuckled punk punching a beehive. Yeah, that's why that's why it's it's better for something to get popular in such a way to where everybody is doing it equally instead of there being a central figurehead. That's why open source software is so unstoppable because you could take down the headquarters, but hey, it was open source, so anybody can then take it and do what they want. So it's like you take down one version of it, and there's like you know a thousand more immediately. I don't know if I want open source if I had to make my own game. I probably would store some backup copies on it. I might be a little bit selfless since I openly sp talk about modding the scourge of freemium and free speech, but I, but I do want to make a little bit of money if I had to. Open source is a multi-billion dollar industry. The idea that people think there's no money to be made from open source would be as dumb as saying there's no money to be made from broadcast TV because you can watch it for free. Oh, really? As if broadcast TV hasn't been like a multi-billion dollar freaking industry. Major industry. Oh, yeah. Free okay. and open source software is a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. It just creates cognitive dissonance when people hear that. I'm just like, well, does Google charge you to do a search? When you turn on your AM, FM radio, do they charge you? To listen to stations? Do they charge you to watch TV? No. Okay. First mod that required that first mod right here is called Rise of the Reds. <clears throat> I'll post it right here. Rise of the Reds is an interesting game. Is an interesting is an interesting mod. It takes it's based off civil it's based off CNC Generals, which involves three... The default game, CNC Generals, involves three factions. The GLA, the Global Liberation Army, though, if you believe the workers' quotes, the liberation part to be, is to be taken with a grain of salt. There is also the USA, which is technologically advanced, and China, which is also pretty advanced as well. Hey, Rich, did you get the link? I'm not seeing anything oh, on the screen yet. And a multi asking here, so uh. here we go. Rise of the Reds is an interest is Rise of the Reds adds two factions. The ECA, which is also high tech, and in some ways even more high tech than America. While the ECA in Rise of the Reds doesn't use drone technology as much as America, 
they have a giant vehicle. They have a giant power. They have a giant power plant called a solar reactor, which provides enough power for a hundred ECA super weapons, and still have tons of power left to use. They also have repairing nanobots, powered armor, long-range artillery, and a super heavy tank that features that nanobots. This I would. I would uh, let's just say between showing off the various review articles I have on my DVR under with NC-17 songs reviews, it would probably take more than an hour. And I want to get to bed soon. Yeah, that's fine. We don't have to do all that. I'm just waiting for Richard to load up the screen share for the uh, link. It should already be uploaded. It should be oh, there. Oh, now we see it. Yeah, should have had it up there for at least 20 seconds. Hmm, there's a little bit of delay time, I guess. That was weird. So are there any, like, screenshots here? Obviously, we're seeing a text-only um, interface here. Um, oh, images. Click on images there. Images. Well, I see videos and stuff. Yeah, let's check out images, though. They might have some screenshots. He's on, uh, um, Conservative Pip is on limited time, so we don't really have the time to go through tons of videos, but if we could get some uh, image uh, screenshots up there as to, as to what he's talking about, that would be great. Okay, I'm going to pull up another, another thing called Community Call to Power. It is a massive Civilization V mod that adds everything from a caveman era to a far future era with, mm -hmm. like, tanks that fight with like tanks that fire lasers, something called a beam jumper. Richard, did you did you flip to the images page because I'm still seeing it on the summary page? It should be where the live stream thing is, and it's like showing. Let, let's just skip that one. I'm going to post some screenshots of a something I have on DeviantArt, which is a bunch of screenshots of one of the mods I reviewed. Okay. Well, we need to advertise your DeviantArt account anyway, so that works. Richard, if you would uh, click into the new link that was just pasted. Okay. Doing that now. For some reason, I'm still seeing the summary page. It's not like it's almost like it froze. Can you like disengage and re-engage screen share? Okay. Another thing I would like to share is, let me pull something up. I'm still not seeing anything. I see your icon there. That's weird. Yeah, I don't have webcam yet. I'm Wait. not talking to you. I'm talking to Richard. Should Richard's trying to do a, yeah, it's not, it's which is really weird. Hand. That's weird. Um, I'm seeing the infinite loop thing and the whole deal. It's working on my end. Not on my end, strangely enough. So I'm not sure if that's just if the glitch is only on my end or if it's kind of universal glitch here. Disengage your screen share. Um, I will engage mine. And... Um, we will go ahead and do it that way. Present to everyone. I don't know if the. Uh, I don't know if the. Um, can everyone see this? Yes, I can see it. I, I, okay. I'm going to say something. I really don't know if the electoral college is corporate controlled, since we had some pretty socialistic people like J. Like Roosevelt, Teddy, and Franklin Delano, and they've took over and did some stuff not in corporations' favor, as well as the founding of a, of like some kind of like, like thing that helps with fraudulent loans and something. I don't remember the name. Yeah, that, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole massive topic that we don't have time for, and it would be an incredible sidetrack. Both me and Richard could speak at length on geopolitics, but um, that would be a huge, massive sidetrack, and you don't have the time for it. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> I don't believe that the Electoral College is entirely corporate control, but that's not to say that 
corporations have done some dubious things with America because they totally have. Yeah, again, that that would be you're risking me and Richard going on like you know a one plus hour more like rant segue. Um, so probably not the best of ideas to get into that right now, seeing as you're unlimited time. It might be a good idea to focus on these mods here. I've got the screen share up. I've got the NC17 Sand Reviews CCTP Civ 5 mod. I've got that on my screen. So maybe if what we're talking about might match what's on my screen, that would probably be a good idea. This mod is extremely vast. There is various things like this protected cruiser, which looks like some kind of steampunk battleship, even though it's based off a real world unit. It's just, it just, it just reminds one of a steampunk thing. And there is other stuff like this fusion tank, this beam jumper, which looks like something out of Warhammer 40k. Yeah, those have kind of got a medieval look to them. That's for sure. Now, this one's got like a semi-futuristic look to it over here. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've seen it in the game. Anything more to say about this, or are we going off to another link, or uh, what are we doing? Oh yes, let me fire up another link. Okay. I also have done some let's plays, but there would. Since I've, but I've made over an hour of footage of Let's Play footage, and I'm working on a second Let's Play as we, as I have. You can visit those in my journal, the links to in my journal for later use. Yes. Now, and now, and now people can see the sidebar within my the chat sidebar within the infinite <laughs> Google tunnel of infiniteness here, because it's kind of doing a repeating loop. In on itself, but I've got the screen loaded up because I'm, you know, just waiting for you to give the next link. So that's the only way I have to click on it is to be able to see it and click on it. So this, let me. Here is another Civilization Five mod that should be noted. That is noteworthy. Right here. Okay, loading it up. And I have it on my screen. We can all see that, right? Yeah. Yep, I can see it. And, I'm, and there's a link in there for a YouTube Let's Play of this mod, but let's not get into that right now. Yeah, not enough time for that. Okay, so what are we going to say about this mod here? You're kind of... Yeah, I'm still working on a lot of play for this mod, but I can tell you it's very good so far. There is even unique unique 3D artwork for resources, like this, like the Lapis Lazuli, and there is others as well on my Let's Play video series. Air, this mod also divides aircraft into three classes, not including helicopters. Air superiority, which is strong against attack aircraft and bombers, but can attack later na air naval units. Air attacks, air attack units are air attack are strong against land and naval units, but weak against cities. Bombers specialize in attacking cities and can release special promotions for killing city population or destroying military buildings. Buildings can also go obsolete in this game, and one and there is even a project in this game, in this mod, called the Campaign to Suppress Bandits which provides a combat bonus against barbarians, culture for killing them, but are occasions when their camp arrives, camps arise in a sport territory, but this uses up a chance to adopt prop, adopt prop policies. They and also if, anybody, anybody they wants to see, if anybody wants to see this and more, they can just go to http colon slash conservativepip.deviantart.com and you can get to his gallery and, you know, journals and all the other before-mentioned stuff. So, please continue. There are also special projects that allow one to tra train a unique 
military unit. Everything from Spartans to a giant death robot to some armored Chinese knight thingies. <clears throat> oh. There is also unique u mo mo units that Smart introduces, like a co like a cog, which is basically a medieval ship. And for some reason, the in-game model makes it appear like the ship is being flooded. And it's also weird how in the default game, tier raids were being deployed well into the medieval era. So basically, you got Voltron standing there yelling, "This is Sparta!" That Where's Voltron? Joke. Never mind. But that was a joke. But Voltron's a big robot. We'll just leave it at that. Wait, I need to do something right now. Okay. Uh, Insert Jeopardy scene music here. Yes, we are live. We are live streaming right now, so don't say anything you don't want the world to know. <laughs> All right. I'm still like I'm like 19, so this is normal. Okay, that's all good. Okay. It's just when outside observers walk in on a live stream, it's good to let them know, hey, on a live stream, don't say anything you don't want the world to know. I know, but I'm. St <laughs> I, this is like my first live stream. I'm. I have to learn this. You know, it requires. I, I was. I, I was just issuing the warning because it sounded like other people were talking to you and they that they could probably hear me. So I was just kind of issuing the warning. <laughs> okay. Another thing I would like to make people aware of is there are also other mods and stuff that I. Here is another mod that I'm going to pull up right good, now. Would it be a good idea to just go into your gallery? Like I could click on conservative tip right here. Yes. That'll take us to the main page. Gallery. And then we go into gallery. Yep, heading there. As quickly as DeviantArt will let me. Okay, and I'm guessing okay, where where am I going here? Wait, scroll back up. Here? There is a scroll back up. Higher. On the side, there should be a a folder that has the words NC17 sign on it. A folder? Uh, yeah, here. Okay, so what are we doing? Okay, this is all of my reviews so far, but I'm still working on others. I don't know what to pull up, honestly. How about we pull... So he, you got a whole bunch of stuff in here? Wait a minute. Wait, let me see. Yep, waiting is exactly what we're doing. Okay. Let me scroll up. To where? A little higher. I ha this is my character's bio. Right here, Son lying on beach. This is basically her personality, and boy, is it pretty vast. But let's just go to... Scroll down. This is the, Ken Bei Fong is the creator of NC-17 Sam. In the world he lives in, which he reports for the world mud, which... 
has weird articles that are fictional. And even though some, even though in their world, corporations do rule, that isn't to say our world isn't much the same. It's just that their world is a little weird. Like, you, like I'm pretty sure, like in, in their world, you can literally hire, you can literally hire everything from mercenaries to demons as mercenaries. Just, just focus on that word. She also has a bunch of phrases and words that describe various things. Calls the various Middle Ancient, various ancient Middle Eastern dialects a Elders could do a language. Frequently says cod grenade when playing video games, and also says copy load. Often uses the word Jap the Japanese word dieto instead of the English word diet after seeing an episode of Penny Stocking and Gardenville. And he has a word called poo poo stealers. She she calls that because there were soap, which describes capitalists who try to hold on to every penny that isn't spent on a decadent lifestyle. This is, they are called poo-poo stealers because they were so incredibly greedy that they would rate, that they would supposedly raid celebrity septic tanks and take their poop just for its sentimental value from being made by a celebrity and having the gold or silver flakes of their expensive food items. This, oddly enough, was inspired by something I saw in, in the, from a song on the kid station in Sims 3. Yeah, and the here's Sims, the Sims so 3 is known for its gibberish. So here's a question for you. Um, does this in any way, shape, or form tie into freemium games and the, you know, the the pretty much the overall topic of this? She is an it's, she is an eccentric but lovable tomboy waif, but occasionally her her personality bleeds out into the let's plays and what she says, and occasionally the the things I come up with in my let's plays and reviews bleed out into this profile, like ver like there is a one word like the word she. One word, one phrase she uses called "young tablet" is a word she got from the Persian leader during her Zaire Erla Talat's play series, which is used for describing a very the most recently available tablet computer in particular tablet line. Okay, and how does this tie into freemium games, which is the topic of this hangout, obviously, you know, and about the modding and so on and so forth. Is this a about some sort of a mod for a freemium game that you play, or no? It's how does just it tie in? It, no. This, like I said, her profile. I add various bits to her profile while coming up to, well, thinking of stuff from my reviews and let's plays, and occasionally this, and occasionally they show up here. Like she thought of a, like she thought of it. She believes in a fictional struggle called Warhammer 401k. And which is an epic battle between cap capitalists and their hired goons, and and for some reason he calls any year before 2010, before like let's say the year 2000, like let's say you call the year 2009-2009, and C17 calls 2009 one year before Bronies. Okay. Also, go back out. Scroll back. Okay. Um, scroll or literally go back out to the main gallery listing. Click the back button, yeah. Where are we going? Scroll down. I would like to show fans a project that I have canceled. There is a comic series by a certain DeviantArt user that I have been parodying called Fantasy Equestria. I... I wanted to get permission to continue the series, and so far, I haven't gotten the permission to continue it, and I have since ceased production on it. Here I did we, ask here, permission to here. make the series, but I didn't want to continue it and stuff. Alrighty. These right here are the various notebook thingies, which is, spot, which is something Mr. Enter thought of. That's an old drawing of NC-17 song, which I have since retired that style. Alrighty. Um, by the way, what time zone are you in? Eastern time, central? I forget what time zone you're in. Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, Eastern that's Standard Eastern time. time. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, all, it's almost midnight by you, then. Okay. I would also... Part of my... 
part of my thing involves why sh why should people waste hundreds of dollars on premium games when there are when there are free to play when there are completely free flash games that one could easily find with a quick Google search. That and many of those reviews are in that folder as well. Like I'm going to pull up one review right now. Right here. Alrighty. Yeah, I was just um, letting you know about the time because I know you said you didn't have much of it and you needed to get to bed, so I just wanted to be respectful of that. But yeah, we saw we saw this in, when I was originally browsing through a well-upgraded merchant ship. It can be customized. NC-17 Sand Reviews, um, Star Runner Genesis. It is a game set between two factions, light and darkness, and there are three classes. A variety of trade goods with varying lethality, legality, frailty, cost, and stability. Your ship's windows, main color, and secondary colors can be customized. There are also quests for selling certain goods to certain locations with a cash flow on top of the profits you receive. Upgrades to the cockpit, life quarters, chassis, and engines change the appearance of the ship, make it faster, adds armor, shields, hull, increases fuel consumption, adds more space for fuel. Some pilots sell different parts. This game also has planets and trading asteroids, two different landing types for the iteration of your ship landing or 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 just land without watching what may be a flash animation. Or even watch your ship in flight on its way to its destination. I would also like to pull up some other games that I think deserve to be looked at in a world of freemium that are these games aren't freemium. There is a game I would like to get. Let me pull up that that WordPad document. Alrighty. So, um, okay. how much longer? How much longer are you going to uh, be able to uh, be on the live stream with us here? I know you had mentioned uh, multiple times about time here constraints, some, here and some I want I want to I want to be respectful of that. So, if you could answer that question for me. Okay, one game that I think deserves a look at is Torchlight 2, which has various mods. I found two on the scene that I think deserve a look at called... Yes. My, apologies for my apologies for interrupting, but I did ask you a question. I wow. said, seeing, seeing as you apparently stated multiple times that you have limited time because you need to get to bed, I would like to be respectful of that. Therefore, I'm asking how much longer you have to participate on the live stream. It's already 10 to midnight in your time zone. I mean, we could talk till 2 in the morning for all that matters, but I want to be respectful of you know the time that, that you wish to get to bed because obviously you need your sleep and so on and I do not want to be disrespectful of uh, your you know the time that you have allotted so um, how okay, much okay. how, how much time do we have left for this conversation that's my question I take 10 minutes okay I just wanted to know because okay. my mind reading skills really suck okay two Two notable mods I found on, on Steam for Torchlight 2, which is a Steam Workshop game. There is something called the Core Mod Pack, which has like, like a, which has various, which is a mod pack of various smaller mods, including one that increases the experience you gain and grants more points for boosting your character. It's not an online game, so uh, it's, the, it's the, the default campaign is an online. There is a, another Torchlight 2 mod I would like to speak about is Synergies, which I haven't reviewed, but if I get Torchlight 2 in the future, I would like to show what Synergies is. Other, there is also a, there is also other games that I think deserve a look at called, there is one called Space Parrots and Zombies, which I had for a while. And it is a free game, and it costs only $9.99, so it's, an also, it's a pretty good buy. One game that deserves a one interesting game series in an unusual fantasy setting, like like really unusual fantasy setting, is the Gene Forbes series, which deserves 
which is it's, it takes place in a weird world where there's an absence of goblins and trolls and dragons, but they pe but the faction in the game that you can play with or against the various games you are either fighting them or with them. They created their own weird creatures, and some of them are quite weird. And I... One final mod. One final mod that I would... Okay. One final mod, then we'll stop the hangout, I hope. Okay. I Thanks and have a good day. Alrighty, is that the last link that you want uh, to show us here? Okay, the, display um, it. Let's play and review. Display okay. it. Okay, cool. Let me let me go ahead and enable screen share. I don't know what that is. I don't know why yeah. that requires Adobe Flash on that thing for some reason. Because it's a YouTube video, that's why. So moving on. Scroll down. This I put I put like various words I say in the video in the description. So instead, so you can look around and find the various humorous lines like that one, horse penis. I I get yeah. I get it. That's a really immature. That's really a mature random generator thingy, and it was like, it's supposed to be an archipelago, like a peninsula, and on the tip of the peninsula was a, was a horse resource. And oh, I, well, that's okay. He, here on PSEC, we use far more immature comedy than that, so you're in good company. Scroll up. No worries. Okay. I'm, I also make various humorous references to my videos. I'll pull up, I'll uh, share with you a few lines from my various Let's Plays. What if there were... Okay. One recent line, one line from... Huh. Now, let me pull up one. Or if people were to just want to go in and read this themselves and watch the full video on the conservativepip.deviantart.com um, forward slash journal. Obviously, um, you know, you could see the, the title there and you could see the, you know, the title okay. in, in the, in the uh -huh. link there as well. So he's got he's got the full um, video explanation here. Um, this, is, this is your YouTube account, correct? Flag Dog 3 is my YouTube account, yes. Okay, yeah, so this is from yours, okay. But my final one line I would like to share with you is from Son, Son Let's Play and Review of His Superpower Part 6. Hello, in 2017, someone was going to learn how to build special base that can be used for marijuana based businesses and marijuana drug dealers to hide money from their governments in their country. He also granted $25 loans for people to try new fast food items. It only required things like belly button lint, pennies, and old toys you no longer desire for collateral. They meant one loan a week. The Pope gave me dope. <laughs> okay. I well, also made a another, my heart. an earlier tech an earlier let's play when I was talking about the banking technology. I was t I mentioned that the Chinese had special banks that grant chi loans. And, I, and, literally, and it literally gave me the idea, while working on a little line, and it gave me the idea for a pretty big World Mud article, the World Mud article. Already, 
So um, obviously you're on Deviant Art and on YouTube. Um, any other social media that people can find you on? Because I know you gotta go in a few minutes here, and I want to be fair and make sure people know all the different places that you know they could find you at. You know, if they want to look at more of your stuff, you got like a Twitter or Facebook page or anything like that. Any other places that uh, people can go for more information? Okay, one more. Okay, so twitter.com forward slash conservative pip. Okay, well, that's easy enough. You also might want to consider checking out TSU one of these days. This if you want. No pressure. On my post, check, look, click my Twitter and, and sh display it. I want to show something. Okay. I can do that. There is a post on there that says this is laughably glad security. Click the summary, and it's from a fellow person on the on the controversy Inc. political forum <laughs> political group. <laughs> Are you a terrorist? <laughs> Found this one off the internet. I don't know if this. All I know is in the world of fair use, you can claim you found it somewhere else and you can't be, or claim you found it somewhere else or, or fair use is an interesting concept. The, official vetting, the official vetting form. <laughs> yes, um, we can. Uh, thank you everybody for um, you know tuning in with us on Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Please be sure to check out Conservative Pip on you know DeviantArt, uh, Twitter, and obviously he has the YouTube account, which you could find through his Deviant Art account. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and have a wonderful one day, night. Or, or, oh, one final word. Okay, what's your one final word? Why waste your hard-earned money on crapping a freemium game and engage in an outwaste contest with trial for players? NC17 so can help extend the life of your games. Some noteworthy mods are free internet games. Enjoy some of our game and gaming-related reviews and guides. Once I get a new computer, I'm going to do a lot more reviews. There is also some honorable mentions that I haven't had the honor of reviewing yet. One is one by the one mod by the same people who did Rise of the Reds is called Commanded is called CNC Shockwave. Alrighty. Well, I'm sure everybody will be looking forward to that. And seeing as you asked if we could wind this down now, um, as I was saying. Everybody be sure to check him out on DeviantArt, on Twitter, on YouTube. And uh, thanks, everybody, for, for watching. I hope you have a good day, night, whatever it happens to be in your part of the planet. And, um, you know, catch everybody later.